Okay, everybody. If you didn't know, the one and only Grace Freeman just had her birthday. Happy birthday, Grace Freeman. Grace, tell us. One year older. What was the best part of your birthday? Well, this is... (laughs) <laughs> this is not what you're gonna want me to say. Oh but wow! This is what I'm saying. This anyway. is spicy. I have a tradition on the night before my birthday that it's I like Christmas Eve. That's fine. It's That's like fine. Christmas Eve. It's like Christmas Eve. But my tradition is I go through the last year of my life and like it's like not like saying goodbye to that year, but like kind of like I just yeah. like like go through and reflect on the last year of my life. And then I, like, write down what I hope for the next year. It's like New Year's, but just for me personally. It's just, like, my own personal New Year's. Yeah. So I had New Year's this week. My own New Year's, what I hope for. for What's the biggest thing you're hoping for? Give it to us, Grace. The biggest thing that I hope for is— We're really putting you on the spot now. I know. Yeah. And you have to answer. (laughs) That's hard. (laughs) Answer. The biggest thing that I hope for is that every day will be a good day. For 25. (laughs) For 25, I hope every day is a good day. That's actually tender. She's turning so 25. So far, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> We're all hoping that. Every one of us is hoping that now. Am I right? That's a great habit. We should. Yeah, all like I want to adopt that. It's good. It's December 10th. It's out. September 20th is like a treasure day for me. Like that it's like so sacred cute. to me. It's good. That's, That's a good so tradition. Cute. Welcome to This Is Kingdom. This is Grace. This is Talon. This is TJ. This is Hollis. And this week, we are going to be reading the talk and talking about it, All Things for Our Good, by Elder Garrett W. Gong. Great job, Hoss. Great job. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, I'm so excited about this talk because I loved it. I loved it so much. And I think it teaches something about the nature of God that if you come to understand and come to believe, I think it's one of the biggest game changers that there can be. And I have to talk about that piece of God with a movie that I just realized, actually, I was just on a plane and I watched this movie and I realized how much I love this movie. It, is, it might be, it might be in my top five. I think Whoa, it's in my top five. Top five? And I never realized that until right now. It's Holes. <gasps> I think okay. it's such oh, an underrated movie. Wow. So good. And the soundtrack in it, like I could, I could just work all day to you mm-hmm. gotta go dig them holes. You know the part I'm talking about? Honestly, no. No, we need to rewatch that. I haven't I seen Holes in, in ten while. years. Yeah. What the, you guys act like you were fans. You're not fans. Well, because I watched it for the first time probably only three years ago. Okay. Really? Let me, yeah. Let me refresh you on this part. You have to remember this part because there's this guy named Sam. Do you remember Sam? Of course. Okay. Sam Sam will go into the school with kissing Kate Barlow. Okay, that's not what she's called yet. And he goes into school. She's just a sweet lady. They have this cute little romantic thing going on. And she keeps having all these problems. She'll have the, you know, the doors like creaking. It's like not quite working. She's like, oh, yeah, the door's not quite working. And he looks at her. Do you remember what he says? I could fix that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, TJ. <laughs> and, then, and then there's like a, a leak in the roof. And what does he say, TJ? <laughs> I could fix that. And there's all these situations that he says that same thing. And then the <laughs> cutest one is she's she's at her desk and she's crying. She's heartbroken. And what does he say, TJ? I could fix that. <laughs> this is amazing. You killed it. You killed it, TJ. And I I don't think there is a better description of of this part of God's nature. And this is what this is what other gong says. He says, the nature of God is to bring all things together for our good. And, and I just think God, just like Sam in Holes, looks at any situation in our life. And not only does he say, I can fix that, but he says, I can make something beautiful out of that. And I think when you come to really understand it, it's going to change every hard thing you go through because you're going to go through that with hope, knowing that God is ready to make something beautiful out of it. And I, I, I feel like I could share a million stories about this book. There's just one that was in my mind. It's well, I'm talking a lot about plane rides, but I was on this other plane ride and I was seeing this lady come down the aisle and she was really struggling to come down the aisle. She's like holding on to all the seats and she was pretty shaky. I could see that it was a struggle and she came and sat right by me and I was like, oh, fun. We just started chatting and we we talked so much on that plane ride and she told me all about her story. Basically, she got beat up really bad and thrown off a cliff. It was, it was kind of cycle and became a quadriplegic. Doctors told her she's never going to be able to move again. They're like, you're going to be completely paralyzed for the rest of your life. And she just talked to me about her journey. And I asked her what she's doing now. She's like, oh, I'm coming back from from speaking. She's like, I travel the world and I I speak to people now. And she's like, this this challenge has actually 
brought me to where I am today. And I was, I was looking at this lady who's doing all these incredible, beautiful things. And I don't, I don't think God wanted her to fall off that cliff. I don't think God made that happen. I think that's just, that's life. That's, that's what happens. It's terrible. There's terrible things that happen, but God took that terrible thing that happened in her life. And he said, I can fix that. And he said, I can make something beautiful out of it. And I think the more we understand that whatever it is you're going through in your life, if you will bring it to God, he can, he can fix it and he can make it good. It's going to change. It's going to change the way we feel about everything we go through. Can I tell you that during a portion of my life, I had beef with three phrases. And those three phrases were, everything happens for a reason, supposed to happen, and meant to be. I feel like those are phrases I've learned and lived by my whole entire life. Yeah, you hear life, them a lot. And I hear them a lot. And I feel like when just tragedy strikes and when things don't go your way, it's really hard to really believe that everything does happen for a reason or those phrases are actually true. And what really helps my mindset in this is this verse that all things work together for our good for those who love God. And I love that because loving God is a choice. And I feel like when we choose to love God, He can create something beautiful from it. I feel like we really want to think that everything happens for a reason, but it is probably a better mindset to let God make reason of everything that happens. No matter what happens in your life, no matter what tragedy may strike, no matter what you are going through right now, if you choose to love God and let him into your life, he will create something beautiful. But that is a choice. Well, it's funny that we started this episode talking about what I do every single year on my birthday mm -hmm. because, so I just turned 25. And when I look back at like my 20 year old, 24 year old year, and where I was exactly a year ago hoping for like what was going to happen. And when I was 24, honestly, most of it didn't happen. And in fact, mostly the opposite of everything I could have hoped for for the year of 24 didn't happen. My hopes got broken. Like the dreams that I had broke, like the goals I had not working out. Like everything that I was like really like putting a lot of faith in for the year of 24 and like being like, yeah, this is going to make it really good, just simply didn't work out. And in fact, I would say I probably had more bad news. I would hands down say that. I had more bad news while I was 24 than any other year in my entire life, maybe combined. It just seems like when I looked back, that was an overarching theme is that it just seemed like things kept not working out how I thought they would. But as I look back on this past year, one thing that I will confidently say is I could not be more different than who I was a year ago. I am a new being. My heart is completely different. And the truth is, I think that, okay, I spent a lot of the time in the year that I was 24 having my heart just absolutely broken in a million pieces. And I don't think that that was accidental. And I don't regret that happening. I'm not angry that that happened because I watched God piece back my heart in a way that he could not have done. My heart didn't just need repairs. It didn't need a bandage. It didn't need just like, oh, let me put that exactly where it was. Let me put that piece back together. My heart needed to be completely rebuilt. It needed to be completely shattered so that God could turn my heart into what it is now. And that is completely new. And I will never, never look back and want to change a single thing that happened when I was 24 because it is the only thing that has made me the person that I'm starting 25 like. And I am so thankful that God spent the past year of my life shaping me into the person that I am today because I'm proud of that. And as someone that I can say like, I love who I am right now. And I am proud of the journey that it took to get here. And it took a lot and a lot of bad news and a lot of disappointment and a lot of sadness. And it's something that now that I look back and I like had that this weekend kind of, I just feel like it's something that I am not angry about. In fact, I would say I'm grateful that God turned it into something so good. I'm so shook from um, one of my first interactions with Hollis was when you came and spoke at the at our backyards and basements and you shared your experience and you said that quote that you mentioned earlier you said maybe uh, maybe the quote isn't everything happens for a reason but that God will bring reason to everything that's happened and when I look at you guys I know you guys enough like we have a deep enough relationship I've seen each of you 
go through crazy things and I've seen God bring reason to, to what happened. And I've seen each of you let God bring reason to those situations. And something that I just have to say, I, I just want to say this, if someone here is listening and you feel like, and you just look at each of you guys, I mean, you guys have been through hard things and then, but each time it's, it's fueled you and it's, it's molded you and God has molded you to do crazy things with those experiences. I mean, you guys are all speaking and teaching and leading and, 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 and guiding in different capacities. And I just have to say, I don't know why this just came to mind, but if someone's, if you're going through a hard thing right now, I think Satan is terrified for the version of you that's going to come out out of out the other side of this trial, bro. That's good. Mm. <laughs> like, that's good. like I think I think Satan is shaking in his boot, bro, <laughs> when he thinks about the person that God is molding you to become, the people that you're going to help, the legacy you're going to leave, the lives that you're going to change forever. If you turn to God, if you let him mold you, if you remember that he's working everything out for your good, God is going to bring reason to whatever is happening right now. Hmm. Oh, so good. It's so good. I can't, can't stop thinking while we're talking of this friend that I have. Her name's Andy. Met her on my HXP trip in Texas. And guys, I'm telling you, she's young. She's, I can't remember if she's 14 or 15, but she's young. And she is one of the most impressive people that I know. She is just a light and she is such an influence for good. And the second that I met her and started interacting with her, I was like, there's something different about this girl. And it was so interesting because I had this chat with her on the bus and she started sharing some, some things she'd been battling with and some, some struggles that she'd had. And I was so impressed by her because in every single one of those struggles, she decided to love God and she decided to turn to him. And, and I just like was looking at her and I was like, I don't think you realize what God is doing in your life. He is turning you in to such a beautiful, beautiful soul. Like he is shaping you into something so good. And I was so inspired by someone so young that made that decision. Whatever the hard is, I will look to God because he is good and he will bring good out of anything that happens in my life. It's so hard to realize that when you're in the middle of it. And that's never my mindset when I'm going through it. And I know that to be true. Like when I'm just in the middle of just like a terrible thing and my heart's just getting absolutely broken, I'm never thinking, oh, I can't wait to be like, I can't wait to see who God turns me into. Mm -hmm. And so I know that this could be frustrating to hear. And I know that sometimes when you're in the middle of it, you're like, yeah, well, this isn't helping me. And this isn't like making me feel any better. But I would just say that I think that being broken and having your heart broken is truly one of the most sacred and holy experiences that we can experience mm -hmm. on this earth. And I do not think that God is far away in those moments. In fact, I would dare say that that's when he's closest to us is when we feel like our heart is in a million pieces and shattered on the ground. And I think that while we look at that and see a tragedy, I think God looks at that and sees potential and says, oh, I cannot wait for you to see what I turn that heart into. He says, I can fix that and I can make that even better. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleasing, that I'm never alone, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Cause you're perfect in all of your ways, perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. Oh, you're perfect in all of your ways. 
You are perfect in all of your ways to us. See you next week.